All right, let's go ahead and get started. We won't wait for the late people. They can file in as they come. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Last week was incredible. You guys filled up that Q&A and we were able to, um, we actually went over an hour last week. So you guys can dip out anytime you need to, uh, but we'll go for, you know, we'll give you a chance till the questions are gone. Then I'll give you a five minute warning to get more questions in there. And um, if we don't have any questions, we'll end it. Otherwise we'll go the full hour. Uh, if you guys have additional questions, we may even go over the full hour. So appreciate you guys being here. Um, always a pleasure to help you guys uh, get where you need to be in the program. I know there's a lot of steps to getting it to perfection, so um, we're here to help. So go ahead and load up those questions. We'll go ahead and start with the first question. Um, first question was, how can I see my dates and follow-up boss? So talking about the follow-up boss integration, uh, let's go ahead into one of our transactions and let's hope we have a follow-up boss. Yep, so we do. So you can either come over here to more, and go to follow-up boss here if you're using the follow-up boss CRM. Um, we uh, just a note, we are making that integration. It's already incredible. We're making it even better uh, for FubCon. They're having a conference in Vegas, uh, November 8th to the 10th. We're actually going to utilize their new deals. They have custom fields and deals that we're going to sync with. Um, probably some more stuff with webhooks, uh, stages, tags, things like that. So anyway, look out for that. It's going to be, it's going to be really cool for your agents to be able to see everything that's going on and open to close over in follow up boss. So. Okay, so you can come here to follow up boss or you can just click here and this is going to open up the follow up boss page. Um, so in here, you're going to want to have your API set up over in uh, here, your APIs. You don't want to set up your API key here for follow up boss. Now, if your agents want, if you want to push stuff to your agents accounts, so let's say you're a TC agency and you're working with agents from all different um, brokerages, you can have them load up their API key over in their agent portal. And that will give you the ability when you go into this transaction now to see. So this is assigned to Brian. Brian's API is actually hooked up here too. So if I want to push through uh, Brian's API instead of mine, so let's say you don't have any, but all your agents use follow up boss, but you can actually push to their API through uh, this. So your name wouldn't be here. But if you have an API and you're like an admin user and you have access to all the different uh, people over in follow up boss, then your name will appear here. Um, you can turn on whatever you want to sync. Um, you will have to add the person where you want to sync the contact. So I have Chuck E. Cheese in here. Uh, that's who we're going to look at and follow up boss. I'm going to turn all those on. Emails, text, notes, field data. Uh, you do have to set up a field sync and say this field in follow up boss equals this field in open to close. So um, look for that API field mapping in your settings. And it's really easy to set up. You can look at the, um, uh, the documentation on how to set that up. And then you have your deal sync, which is going to get a lot better sooner, but um, sooner than later. But um, here it is, and you can push over this deal and create a deal over in follow up boss. And then you have the widget, and the widget is going to be this handy little widget over here where your agents can see what's going on. They can change from timeline to details to contacts to documents and see all the different documents that are in your files, whatever you give them access to. So you'll give them access, but um, to answer the specific question, it was how do I see my dates over here? A um, couple of different things you want to check. Uh, make sure that you do have a role set here on the person that you're syncing to for the widget, or else those dates aren't going to show up over there. Um, if you don't have this set, it doesn't know where to. It doesn't know what permissions to use. So if you click on buyer, uh, you're going to have your manage roles. You can come in here and you can just create one called Fub Agent, and then you can just give them access to everything if you want. Just click all these. It'll give them full access to all your in, in information and open to close. Let's say you don't want the agents to see documents. You can go ahead and delete those out or certain contacts or whatever. You can customize this however you want. But just make sure that role set or it won't know what permissions to push over there. And you'll have a widget that is blank over here. So um, for the dates, uh, one of the things that you want to make sure is that you're sharing dates with your agent. So if you come over to the uh, field editor, hammer icon field editor, and you're going to come here and this purple is show in portal. Uh, show in portal is also show in follow up boss. So you're going to make the uh, make purple for everyone that you want to show up over there. And then your dates, that'll be your timeline. Um, your dates, uh, you're going to want to make sure that this is clicked, uh, the API calendar. So if you click on this, if you don't click on it, it's gray. If you click on it, it's purple. Make sure they're purple, the ones you want to show up over there. And that should solve your problem. John, if you have any other issues with that, go ahead and contact me and um, through support, uh, help at opentoclose.com or your little purple widget down the bottom right-hand side of your screen. 
and we can get we can go into individual and see if maybe there's a little bug or something in there but that should solve your issue okay um on my client's page on follow boss it shows property um i click drop down click the property but no info shows that's probably the role uh john that's probably the role that you have in there and you just don't have it set if you do have it set just message us and we'll do a little uh one-on-one -on -one with you and i'll shoot you a video or something and we can go through that in more detail in your account so okay cool um that was it for questions so far so guys if you have questions go ahead and get them in there um go ahead and put those in let me show you some things with fields. We did add the ability to mass um, edit fields, which is really cool. If you're using our, you know, pre-built accounts or your our seed accounts and you don't want some of this stuff, you can just check on it. You can delete. Now, be real careful about deleting. I would much rather you um, edit instead of delete, because let's just say home inspection, you want to change it to home inspection, period, or something like that. Well, now, if you have smart blocks and merge fields and all this stuff set up in your account and you delete this, it's going to kill all those links. Uh, if you edit this, it will just update those links throughout your emails and your smart blocks and everything. So by editing it, um, it's going to disseminate through the whole program and update everything instead of deleting and you may be screwing up a bunch of templates. So just a little quick tip, uh, but this does uh, this is wonderful to have this now we didn't have this before you had to do each individual one click on it go over here delete there was a bunch of clicks involved so this is great um if you are using webhooks obviously um you'll see this that is on the upgraded plan the 99 dollars upgrade uh, and you have the ability to anytime this field changes send it off to zapier or wherever the api or wherever you're you know wherever you have that connection and update it over in boomtown or commissions inc or you know sisu or wherever uh, wherever you're using, you can update fields uh, by using those webhooks. A lot of different functionality for those as well. Um, before we move forward with showing on how to edit the fields, the other thing, and I wasn't sure if you covered this because I had to look away really quickly, was if you are inviting clients, so not agents, but clients through like the portal, you also might need to check to make sure that they have permission to see certain things. So Andrew, do you want to go to the organization and users and go to the portal roles? Um, this is for for um, for you, John, to show you. So you're going to go to portal roles. Here you've got your different portal roles. Obviously, you can see we've got team leader in here. You can add escrow agent, lender, whoever it is that you need to invite to it. Now, if Andrew clicks on permissions, this is also where we're showing what do we want them to see. By default, these are usually blank. So not only do you need to have your fields show with the purple star show this in their platform but we also want to make sure that we have their permissions here as well set up because we don't always want them to see everything but if you want them to have the ability to view the documents but not download them you can always say here are the documents you can upload them here they are but we don't want you to be able to download them if you want them to be able to see any of the completed tasks we can have that timeline details you can see everything else that's on the screen um did we show this i couldn't sorry yeah, we did. <laughs> kind of jumped in we showed it oh, okay perfect sorry <laughs> cool. um awesome. so hey another thing that just came to my mind too for all the users since we don't have any um oh well let's let's tackle this question first can you show how to edit that sure so let's go over to the um field editor and um you just click on what it, now some of these are you know city you can't change that it's one of our you know it's one of our stock things we barely have any I think we have six to eight things that you can't change um, and those are because filtering and other things throughout the program that we just we can't have you change this or it's going to screw up a lot of different um, functions of the program but if you come down here to a field that you created it's going to come over here and you can change this field label let's just change it to um, septic inspection period and then you can come down here now you can leave this merge field the same um, which I would, I'd probably leave it the same. Now, if for some reason, it's not describing what you want it to, and you do need to update this, you can. Um, typically, what I'll do on a new field when I'm creating a new field is just triple click there, hit Control C to copy it, and then come down here and hit Control V to paste it. And it'll take all the, you know, it'll put underscores in there and take out all the capitals and make it exactly how a merge field should look. Uh, once you change the name of it there, all you have to do is come down here. Now, this placeholder text is like if this was city. You may want to type in like Chicago so that the agent um, or the TC filling this out kind of has an example of what should go in here. Um, and then all you have to do is come down here and say, I'm updating, I understand, and hit update. And now that's going to update throughout. I'm not going to do it, um, but all you have to do is hit update and it's going to update it over here in your fields. 
The other thing with updating fields is keep in mind that special characters don't always work in the naming conventions. There are a couple, like you can see that and that ampersand works. Sometimes dashes will work, but um, when we're talking about apostrophes, sometimes those won't work in the system. So you'll have like a blank space. So just keep that in mind. Also, I always suggest making sure that your merge fields are really clean and simple. So if you are using stuff like the ampersand or you're using a dash and you look at that merge fields and you've got underscore, 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 try to clean that up. So you've got, you know, inspection, underscore, if there was a dash, you'd have an underscore date instead of having multiple. Yeah, you can see here where it says like, it's not going to take it. It's not going to put it in there. So just keep that in mind when you're making alterations as well. Yeah, Clean up your merge fields. Make sure they look nice and clean. I had to put a bunch of them in there. And these yeah. are important. The reason merge fields are important is because when you're in your email templates and you go ahead and paste those merge fields in, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want to have a good representation of what you're pasting in. So home inspection is good representation of the field home inspection. Um, but if you had like, I don't know, say this said something else that didn't describe this field, you change this field label, then you may want to change your uh, merge field so that you know what that is. Um, the reason we can't do some special characters, just in case people have questions on that, is because in the code in the back of the program, we use a lot of like the pound sign and then words and then the pound sign. That's a certain function of how the program works. If we have that in here, um, it could screw up how the program works and you could it could get super buggy so that's why there's only certain special characters available okay if there um let's see is there a merge field for the file name or is it possible to create one um file name so it kind of depends um obviously we want you guys to to use the file roles when we're talking about creating that connection between your documents and your file roles and have them automatically pull onto transactions i think that might be what you're referring to um, if you guys needed to track it where you wanted a field and you say, do we have this? Do we not have this file? There's really no way to connect that field to the actual file role. So it would be a matter of you've uploaded the file, you've assigned the file role, and then you'd have to go to your fields and you'd have to check that box and say yes or no. Did you receive it? So Andrew, I'm sure you're probably going to show them, you know, the, 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 the documents versus like the field section right now, right? Yeah, so we can show um, so there's a couple of different ways people do this too for the file name. Like a lot of people duplicate their work, which I'm not a big proponent of. And they come in here and they put their document names in here as well. And they'll put some information in here, whether it's dates or words or whatever. I, I don't think that that's necessary at all because you have the ability over here to assign the file role to it and then automatically attach these or um, and you can say like, you can put a smart block in there in your email. And if you have a list of documents and you want to send an update email to someone and you don't want to use our one sheets and you want to do a custom email update, you can say your condition on your smart block. So let me go over to smart blocks and show you, whoops, sorry. Uh, your condition on your smart block, and I'm just, this one won't make sense, but down here it will be, if that document exists, then put in this wording. And the wording can be the name of the document is still missing from the file or that document has been uploaded to your compliance system or whatever your message wants to be. So if you do want to make a custom email with documents and whether they're in the file or not in the file yet, I would use smart blocks, just use a list of smart blocks. And um, if you want to, you can go to our video on email smart blocks and smart groups. If you're putting a bunch of smart blocks in a row. You may want to handle that through a smart group. So it's just one line in your email templates and uh, it's a lot easier to use, but I would definitely recommend watching that 15 to 20 minute video on merge fields, smart blocks and smart groups, because it's really enlightening. And we'll go through some examples so that you guys can see exactly what we're talking about um, here. Oh, she said, I was actually asking about the name of the, the transaction name. Sure. So this one right here uh, is your so this right here is just address. So you can put that in as a merge field under address. And let me just show you how that works. So control A is the shortcut for merge fields. Uh, if you come in here and type in address. Okay, so there's address and you can post that in as a, a merge field. The problem with address is it's just gonna give this. So just make sure that's what you want. Um, if you want the whole spiel of Beverly Hills, um, California 90210, then you're gonna wanna use the contract title. So contract title is gonna give you the whole thing. Now be aware, um, here, contract title, it's right here. And so, but be aware, some people do come in here and change this to like buyer, blah, blah, blah. You know, they change, it's just not the address. 
if you change this and use contract title, it's actually going to put in whatever you write here for this. So if you're changing this address to the buyer's last name or seller slash buyer last name and then some other stuff, that will appear in that contract title. So you, in, in, instead of doing that, you may want to do address, comma, city, comma, state, you know, zip um, and, and handle it that way. You can also do a smart block. Um, you can create your own smart block with this in it. And then you could just create like a custom address. And then that smart block would be called custom address and you could post that in wherever you wanted it. Uh, so just a quick little thing here, Andrew, just because sometimes I know people, there's a few sections in the system where you can try and update something, but you have to click into it. So if you want to say update the contract title, you just show them real quick how you might do that. Yeah, sure. Um, you just click on it and then you can edit it right here. And then hit this checkbox after you're done. Some people just don't, they don't even realize that necessarily for just all it takes is a click. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a little like edit button next to it or anything to kind of clue you in that this is editable. But yeah, if you just click on this, you can edit it uh, right here, which is nice. All right, cool. Okay, uh, we are as quiet group today, a lot of, you know, decent amount of people in here, but uh, just a little bit of questions. So I'll go ahead and mention some of the stuff that we have going right now. Um, give you guys some time to put some questions in there. Right now, we do have the assistantly partnership, which is um, which are VAs uh, or remote partners that you guys can hire that are pre-trained on open to close to help you with your business. Um, if you're not ready for a U.S.-based hire, you just don't have the money right now. Um, maybe you know look into the assistantly. It's go.assistantly.com, go.assistantly.com/slash open to close. And that will give you all the pricing for if you want an open to close trained or just a regular VA. Maybe you want someone to check your email every day and order your dry cleaning and do that sort of stuff. You can also get a um, general uh, VA. The other thing that we um, are promoting recently is our partnership with Move Easy. They will set up your utilities. Um, Sarah, I see your name in here. I believe you're using it at a decently high level. Um, I'd love to talk to you about that, but um, one of the things that we're going to do is anytime your clients order a security system from MoveEasy, we're actually going to give you guys uh, 75 bucks. So uh, that hasn't been announced yet. That's just, you know, um, giving you some inside information on what's to come, uh, but you're going to get a $75 uh, promotion for any time your clients sign up for uh, security systems, whether that's ADP, Simply Safe, um, Vivint, you know, some of those people. Um, you'll be able to make some money and actually pay for this program. So you could possibly get the program for free. So, which is kind of cool. And we'll be, we'll be going more into detail. We'll do some webinars and things like that on it. But if you want more information, you can always uh, email me and I can give you as much information as I have at the time. Okay. What's the best way to set up a new con um, contract? Oh, contract, contract. I just typed it twice. What's the best way to set up a new contract? Yeah, so a couple of different theories on this. Um, when you're first getting in the system and you know you don't want to have to set up so much stuff at the very beginning, an easy way to set up a new property is just new property. And this is going to be a manual way to do it. You type in the address, one, two, three, four. Uh, we'll just grab this address here. You choose your team that it's going to be assigned to. You choose your user who's going to be notified. And you can assign your agent portal user if you want. Um, you can set your property templates, which are just a conglomeration of other templates. So you, you, there may be five templates listed in here. So if I grab, um, let's see, buyer mass, all these templates will come in just by choosing this one template. So it's just an easier way to do it instead of if you came from TC Workflow, you had to say apply template, apply template, apply template, and keep going through that. You don't have to do that anymore. Go to the next screen and you just fill out the fields. So you can come in here, fill out the field, go to the next one, fill out the field, um, and you know, do what you need to do. Now, that's not the way I recommend it, but that is definitely the first step as you get in the program. You can start doing transactions day one, get used to the navigation of the program. But as you get a little bit more advanced, the best way to set it up is through an intake form. And, and we do have two webinars on intake form. One is a beginner, one is an advanced. I highly recommend watching those because it's going to go through all the menu items and the uh, best practices on setting that up. And then we're actually going to go through a transaction in the advanced one and show you how to um, get a little bit more advanced on your intake forms. Cool thing about intake forms is now you're going to be able to automatically um, trigger those task templates and fields and you know all the other templates. So now you can say, if HOA is yes, I want you to bring in my HOA fields. I want you to bring in my HOA documents. I want you to bring in my HOA tasks that I need to do. And you can do that for everything. You can do it for financing. For And so now you can make very small templates, very small task templates, document templates, things like that. And you can bring them in in little chunks 
so that the TC is only seeing what they need to see. So if you came into um, this one and you went, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in email templates. Let me go down to intake form templates and let's go to this one and we'll go to the triggers. And now you can come in here and say, hey, let me just open these all up actually. Um, so you can come down here and say, if this one doesn't make a lot of sense, but if unit number is equal to blah, 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 then do whatever this is. So in yours, it's gonna be fields, um, fields and uh, templates. And uh, you'll be able to come in here and say, I want all these fields to come in if septic system is equal to yes. Or you could bring in a whole field section. So you got fields with the little acorn, you got field sections here. Um, the cool thing about adding the field sections is that if you edit the field section, um, it will be constantly updated in, in your uh, intake form. If you use fields, and let's say you um, add another field to this section of fields, well, that's not going to come in unless you go edit all your intake forms. So definitely watch those intake form uh, webinars, and they're going to give you a lot of insight on best practices on how to set this up. So my preferred way is intake form trigger everything to happen based on the answers in the intake form. And that way the TC is seeing exactly what they need, not too much, not too little. And they don't have to do any, all they have to do is fill out the intake form and everything's gonna trigger automatically to get them to that point where in the past you had to manually add whatever you did, or maybe in another program, you had to go and delete out a bunch of things in your task template that didn't apply to cash deal or something like that. You don't have to do that anymore. Okay. Um, how much do they charge? I'm not sure, uh, John, what's that in reference to? If you can give me a little reference on that, then I will come back to that question uh, next. Um, oh, the VA. Yeah, so um, they're all over the board, depending on if you want them full-time, part-time, um, if you want a U, an OTC trained one, or if you want just a general uh, remote partner. Um, I know for the, if you want a full-time OTC trained, and, when I see an OTC trained, there's a week of training up front and two hours every month after that. Um, we give you upgraded support, premium support on that. And there's a bunch of list of other things you can read about. And I think that one is right around $2,200 a month. Um, and then part-time, I think, is 20 hours. And that one, I, I don't know how much that one is off the top of my head. I think $1,700, somewhere right around there. And then if you want a general one, those prices go down because we're not having to constantly um, keep up with the training and the resources and things like that. So yeah, the website, I'm going to post it. If so, if someone on here, Matthew, if you could post it as go.assistantly.com slash open to close, if you could just post that in the chat or um, somewhere for everyone so they can see it. Yeah, I'll throw it in the chat. Okay, yeah. And I'll just type it in here too so you can, if this recording is up, uh, you can see I already have it here. So go assistantly um, com slash open to close. And that's going to redirect over to our shared page with assistantly. And then you can come down here and look at um, what we offer, you know, how much the pricing is, um, what you get. So here's all the things that they could possibly do, plus many, many more. Um, so anyway, this is going to give you a nice overview of it. Okay. Um, can you please review how to build colored fields into your field templates? Yeah, and, and you know, I wouldn't use field templates. Um, unless you're using Mango transactions, I wouldn't be using field templates. Field templates right now, the way they are, and we are gonna change this in the future. But for right now, when you apply a field template, it deletes out all the other fields and just brings in that field template of fields. Um, not the best way to do it. Like I said over here, if septic is yes, I want to bring in my septic field section. If well is yes, I want to bring in my well field section. If financing is yes and it's conventional, I want to bring in my conventional field section. So like now you can get a lot more granular and you're not having to do a one size fits all field template where like 80 fields come in. Well, you may not use all those 80 fields. Being able to segment them down into singular questions like is there an HOA, bring in my HOA field section, that's going to be a lot cleaner method um, to bring that in. Now, now let me answer your question. Um, so let me come over here to the field editor. And in the field editor, you can click on the field. So let's say contract, uh, let's do contracts client type. That's a good one. So over here, it's going to pop open your options because this is a, um, uh, this is an options type thing where you can type in as many as you want. 
and you can see so you can see here someone put gorilla which means nothing but it's just showing you how custom the fields are this is probably the best part about our system compared to a lot of others is a lot of others try to pigeonhole you into what fields you can use they say inspection period and you're in north carolina and you use due diligence period or you're in texas and you use option period now you just have to like teach your people hey this means this like that wasn't okay with us. We want it to be 100% custom so you guys could come in here and create a field called peanut butter and put that as a merge field, make it a make it into a smart block, do whatever you need to do with fields because that is really the backbone of a good scalable system. So in here, when you come in here, you're gonna be able to see when this, um, so this will be the default table cell color, okay? That's this, that's this gray color. But if I choose gorilla, I want to make it purple. And if I choose buyer, I want to make it uh, this teal color. So let me show you that in action. Um, let's come over. Uh, the easiest place to probably look at it is the properties table. Okay, so if you're on the properties table and you can, in the in the um, transactions too, you can see all this on the side. I'm just going to come here because it's really easy. So uh, there's two things. If you're on our $69 premium plan, you're not going to have the automated uh, color choosing. You, you will have the ability to come up here and click on this button and manually choose the color. But if you want the automated, it is on the upgrade, the $99 upgrade. And what that's going to do is when you come in here, it's going to show you if I pick gorilla, it's going to be purple. If I pick buyer, it's going to be blue. If I pick seller, it's going to be green. Dual is going to be this, uh, I guess it's a pinkish color. So if I choose gorilla and hit OK, it should turn it to purple, which it did. And that's how the automatic um, field. So in your case, if you're bringing in a field template, okay, let's go to history and let's go back to that transaction we were in. And let's come over here and you can see a bunch of colors on here. Now, if I change pending to active, it's gonna turn it to that pink color. So once the fields come in, they'll automatically have these from the field editor. And now it's asking, because I changed the contract status, it's asking me if I wanna delete out tasks or, uh, whatever, because I could be changing it to close, and then I don't want to have all these tasks left over that are reminding me to do things. So, but to answer your question, um, all of those are set up in that field editor, the original field editor of what colors are going to be. So when the fields come into the transaction, those are already set. And so all you have to do is click on it, and then you'll have those options that I showed you uh, under here. Okay. Okay. Um, can a one sheet be attached as a PDF? Yeah, that's the only way that a one sheet comes in. A one sheet comes in as a PDF. Now you could create a custom email with a bunch of smart blocks to recreate how you want to do it instead of a one sheet. But if you're using our one sheets, that's going to be a PDF attachment um, onto that email. And so if you come into templates, hammer icon templates and come down to one sheets. Um, so you could have different kinds too. I think a lot of people think that they have to do an overall humongous update. Um, I like to do just a document update uh, once a week. And then you could do a, um, I, I don't really see the need for contact updates, but maybe at the beginning of the transaction, you want to send one out just to kind of give them all the contacts, all the fields that you want to share with them, all of the documents. Um, the thing I like about documents, and I'm just going to go into one so I can show you the whole deal, but here are all the fields you can check. Right, you can check any of those fields to show up on the one sheet. And then you can go through all your field groups and check anything you want. On the design, you can come in here and make it your logo, your colors, all that good stuff. You can put your logo in here. Uh, layout, uh, you can come in here and move stuff around if you want. If you wanted the seller disclosure section above septic, you can move those around. You can't move individual fields. Um, it's just a limitation of the system right now. And then you come in here and say, yeah, I want to share them the contact information for these certain people. And you can come down here and add whichever ones you want. You can add just business information, personal and business information, whatever you want. Documents, which I think is kind of the coolest, is you can come in here and say, include the additional files or don't include them. Include the document file links, include notes, flag missing documents. You know, include the little legend of what all of your little buttons mean. If you guys have buttons for approved in Skyslope or approved in dot loop or whatever, all those buttons could come in. So here are those custom labels. Um, so this gets really granular and it's a really nice update. Um, property notes, you can put those in there. Pin tasks, completed tasks, scheduled tasks, unscheduled tasks. So we give you a lot of different options. And then the email, uh, you can embed an email, a template email in here. Um, so if you wanted to create one with a bunch of smart blocks and merge fields in here so that here's your update for, and then it puts the data in and blah, 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 blah. You can, you can do all that in this section. 
uh, recipients. Who do you want to send this to? You can have multiple one sheets going to different people. So I may send different information to my escrow officer than I send to the lender, than I send to the buyer, than I send to the buyer's agent. So you can create four separate ones. Uh, there is a limitation of three per transaction on our base plan, unlimited once you get up to our secondary plan. Uh, you add in the people you want. Where do you want them? You want them on the CC, on the two, on the BCC. And then finally, you can come in here and schedule it for every Tuesday at, I don't know, 5 a.m. or whatever. Or you could say, hey, I wanted it uh, 4 a.m. And then I want another one to go out on Tuesday, but I want this one to go out at 8 a.m. Not that that would make sense, but you have that ability to do multiple times and dates. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these so I don't get these emails later. And let me see if anything else is in here about one sheets. Um, okay, so I think that should have answered the question. If you have any follow-ups, you can, uh, I think Hannah's on your ticket right now. Okay, cool. Um, is it possible to add folders in emails? Um, what's the best way to organize emails that are not associated with an open property? So let's tackle that first one. Is it pop possible to add folders in emails? Um, no, kind of. <laughs> if you use smart blocks, you can kind of work around that. But no, there's no native way to really use a um, to use a folder. Now, what you can do is you can come down here and say, anytime this uh, email goes out, I want to add all of these documents if they exist. So any of these documents, if they exist, go ahead and send these out. And then up here, you could use a bunch of smart blocks and things like that to um, uh, to accomplish like does this file exist? Um, hey, this file still doesn't exist. Can you please give me an update on it? You can write all that in the smart block. And the condition on that could be, if this file exists in your documents tab, then go ahead and put this wording in. If it doesn't exist, go ahead and put this other wording in. So you would create two smart blocks, put them side by side. Depending on the situation, it would put in the appropriate verbiage so that you can get that out to your client and they can either get it to you or see that it's been submitted. And then what's the best way to organize emails that are not associated with an open property? Um, yeah, so any, anything that's sent out more than once should be a template. And your templates, you can come in here and get, um, I like to do like a B in front of my buyer emails and then it's the accepted offer and then who it's going to. Is this going to the buyer? Is it going to the buyer's agent? You can do something like that. You can have a numbering system I've seen people do. I've also seen people put the state that they're working in in this um, title so that if they're working in Florida and Georgia, they know which one this should be going to. Um, what else have I seen in here? Uh, we also categorize them as well. Um, that's how um, Jana and I have built out things is that we use the categories pretty often. That way you can go, okay, I want to see all of my Florida emails or Idaho emails. I want to see all of my Florida buyer emails. I want to see all of my Florida HOA buyer emails. Like you can get pretty granular with your, with your categories too, if you want to. Yeah. So you can only assign one category at this time to mm -hmm. the um, thing. So make sure this is like your higher level sorting. So probably if you're in multiple states, it'd probably be a state would be a good way to do it. Um, you could have all those ones undefined. Like if you don't really, if they're just an email that you have in there that you may use later or something like that. You could put like unused or, you know, working file or something like that to put them on there. But just know that you can only put one category here. And that's why you want to get more granular in your uh, naming convention. So, and then folder, she says, sorry, I meant the email inbox. Um, I don't have an email inbox hooked up in this account. Sorry, I can't show you that. But um, uh, let's see here. Is it possible to add folders in emails? Yeah, you know what you could do is you could come over to, uh, now these would be associated with a certain property. Uh, but let me show you this real quick. Um, so if you're in emails right here, you have these right here. And you can come in here and... Um, set folders. So if you put everything into a folder in Gmail, like say you put everything into a one, two, three, um, you know, one, two, three main street folder, then you can access that folder over here in the emails tab of a transaction. Now, if you wanted to do not associated with a transaction, uh, then you would have to do um, probably a folder in your actual Gmail. That would probably be the best way to do it, honestly, at this point. Now we are going to look into some upgrades on Gmail and how that works um, and look at the API again and revisit that and see if there's anything else that we can add. We are limited by what Google gives us access to. So, um, you know, there's some limitations there for sure, but we're gonna revisit that and try to make that integration a little bit better in the future. Um, 
Can you connect OTC and DocuSign? Uh, yes, uh, not yet, but yes, it's in here. So let me show you, I think I have it in this account where you select the documents you wanna to send to DocuSign, you hit options, you hit DocuSign. It's gonna take you over here to the profile. Um, we're gonna grab the profile, hit next. Um, you can create as many of these profiles as you want over in the apps. So if you go over to the gear icon in the apps, um, you can come over here and put like all your agents DocuSign accounts in here. By default, it's going to put the envelope name. Uh, this should be released soon. So we have a new pricing plan coming out. If you want to be, if you want to have DocuSign, uh, you're going to have to be on our version two pricing, um, and and we're going to release that really soon. And it's going to be a manual thing. So if you guys say, "Hey, I want to switch over," I'm going to manually switch you over so that we can test it because it's a brand new pricing system. Um, make sure everything goes okay. So if you want to be on that beta, let me know. You'll just have to give me feedback if anything looks funky once we change it. And then we'll get you, um, if you're on the $99 upgrade plan, that's the one that DocuSign comes with. So either that or higher, you'll have this DocuSign. So you come in here, you have all your documents. You can say, I want to send it to my two buyers. And then um, come down here. Do I want to, um, so this is sending it back. So once it's signed, it's going to send it back into your documents tab automatically. Um, if it's too big, it will give you a link. Um, but if it's not too big, it'll just come back in as an unproved document, which is really, really nice. And then if you want to send reminders, like if they don't sign it um, after two days, send them a reminder and send a reminder every day after that. You build your envelope. Once you hit build, it's going to open up DocuSign in a new tab right here, but right beside it. And you can go ahead and work DocuSign just like you typically do. Um, the big advantage is going to be this, where it comes back automatically. And here is an unapproved document. It notifies you, and then you can go and approve it, put the right file rule on it and set off your automation. So yeah, DocuSign's coming. Um, and if you're interested in being on the beta plan, uh, let me know through uh, help at open to close and um, we'll go ahead and get that hooked up for you. I do have to release the pricing first though, before I can do that for you. So the pricing should be ready in about a week, two weeks, somewhere right around there. Don't hold me to it. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Also, I have 15 deals for the trial. There's no time limit, correct? No, no time limit, John. Um, take your time. That's what we wanted to, we used to have a 30 day trial and people were running into switching from one system to our system and feeling incredible amount of pressure to get everything ready to go before they had to pay for two systems. And so we figured, let's just give people 15 transactions. That gives you as long as you want to set it up. You rifle through those 15 transactions. Hopefully you get paid for those 15. And then honestly, if you're you know, if you're a TC, I don't know if you're a TC agency or an agent, but like if you're a TC agency and you're charging 400 bucks, you just basically got a free couple of years of the program with the amount of fees that you made during those 15 transactions. So uh, I think it's a really good deal. I think it was a great idea that Shane had just to give people peace of mind that they could get in here and take their time getting it set up without feeling that, you know, clock ticking on them when you have so much going on in this industry. Can we edit the property details section? Um, for example, the home inspection is a date, but the contingency isn't due. Oh, hold on, sorry, things jumped on me there. Um, can we edit the property details section? For example, the home inspection is date, but the contingency isn't due until another date. Um, let me reread that, make sure I understand what you're asking. Uh, can we edit the property details section? Um, you can edit it kind of, so you can add to it for sure. You can, um, so these two things can't be changed, contract status and contract client type, but you can change the options inside of them. So you can come in here and say, uh, you do this over in the file editing screen, which I showed you before, but you can come in here and add extra choices to this or change the choices that are in here because we know that not everyone, you know, contract status is a good one. Every state has a little bit different terminology in their MLS. And so when you come in here, some people have like, active option contract. I don't have that in my, my MLS. I have, um, you know, I may have something worded a little bit different. So you can come in here and delete these out and make other ones. The reason we have to keep the contract status is because of filtering and it's built into the program a certain place so that you guys can filter your transactions and filter things. So we can't have this change, but we can have the options change. So, um, uh, contingency. Yeah, and you can add as many custom fields as you want. So you're unlimited. So it's really cool. As you get in here and you're like, man, I wish I could X, whatever that is. Um, you know, a lot of times I would get in here and be like, man, I wish I could send this email automatically. Uh, but I just, 
don't have anything in my system to be able to do that. Typically, the first place I think about is add a field. If I can add a field and the TC can just copy like the date that we received it and that trigger things to happen, then that's worth the time of filling out another field to me because now I just filled out a one second, you know, three seconds to fill out a field. And I just had something that normally took me three to six minutes happen, or maybe five things happen. Maybe an email goes out to five different people, a text goes out to the agent, a template gets added, you know, many things can happen that normally would have took me maybe 20 minutes to do all that stuff. And now I can do it just by clicking this button down and uh, three seconds here, and then go up to your home screen and hit or your priority bar and hit send. Um, and, and now it took me, you know, a minute to do a 20 minute um, action. Okay. Um, Diana, if you want on the uh, beta, just go ahead and email help at open to close or hit the little purple button down here and send a message and just say, um, please forward to Andrew, I want to be on the beta for um, DocuSign. And I will log that and we'll be making some announcements and things on um, Facebook. So if anyone's not a part of Facebook group, please uh, go there and get on there because it is pretty active and there's some really good information flying back and forth on that. Okay, we are out of questions. What are we at? 1140. Um, I'll give you guys another five minutes uh, or so to go ahead and load up with questions and uh, I'll answer anything that comes in. If we don't have any questions in the next four or five minutes, we'll go ahead and end this. Um, and let me think of what I can show you in the meantime. You know, for anyone not using it, property email addresses here, your agents can, um, and what you can do is you can copy this. Um, and there's a merge field for this too, I think. So let me go into merge fields. So this is cool. You can make an initial email that goes out to your agent and you can say, hey, just so you know, if you want to email me documents in, use this address. And you just click that, it'll copy it and you put it into your template email. And now it's just going to grab whatever is in that transaction and send that um, property email to your agent. So now if they send you a document, instead of you going to your email, sifting through 400 junk emails, finding it, downloading, uploading, all that stuff, it just comes straight into your document section as an unapproved document. So the other thing you can do is if they send you a document in your email, you can forward to this. Uh, once you're in Gmail and you've, you've typed this in one time, all you have to do is type in TX and it's gonna give you a list of things to choose from in Gmail. TX and then you can see the address and you can pick the address you wanna send this to and you could actually forward it to this address yourself. Uh, instead of the whole download, upload, find, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, can you email this recording after class? Oh, we don't email them, but all of the recordings are in our knowledge base. If you go to, I think it's just called Workshop Wednesdays, there should be a list of every single one we've done, except for one that I forgot to record and one that I lost. So minus those two, all of them should be in there. And I apologize for those two. I just, uh, I don't know what happened, to be honest with you. Um, okay. Can we see the property email live in action or is there a video? Um, I don't have like a junk email account to do it on. And I have a bunch of emails in my account right now that I can't really get in there. But um, but what you, here, you know what I can show you? Hold on. Let me stop the share and I'm going to share. Uh, let me go over to my other account. You guys aren't going to be able to see this right now, but I'm in my other account right now. And I'm going to try to find something where I can show you uh, how we've done this. Okay, templates. So we created an email template of the property email address. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, property email address, buyer's agent. Yep, here we go. Okay, so let me share my other screen. And let me go over to our old account here. Um, here, share. Okay, here we go. So in here we have, um, We've successfully processed your transaction. If you have any additional documents you need, blah, 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 you know, all this kind of stuff. And then down here, uh, we'll say, if the if you have the document in an email, you'd like to forward, forward the email to the attached documents to property email address. And all we did, like I said, was go over to um, control A, opens your merge fields, come to utilities, click on this. You put that in your uh, email template. And now whatever, whatever property you're emailing this from, okay, so if you're in 123 Main Street and you send this out, it's actually going to uh, send this. And so I don't, I, this is missing obviously because I'm not associated with a transaction right now. But if you're associated with a transaction, it's gonna go grab that property email address from the transaction and go ahead and pop it in here. And so you can see that, you know, we have a nice little email for them with that, with that link. 
So hopefully that hopefully that helps you out with your question. Okay, out of questions again. Um, oh, yep, no problem. Uh, brand new, cool. Well, good luck. And uh, like like I tell all new users, like go at your own pace. Try to bring what you're doing from whatever program you're coming from into open to close. Don't feel the pressure just because everyone else is using intake forms, just because everyone else is using smart blocks. Don't try to jump to step 10 before you get your foundation in. What you want to do is just start maybe with a manual transaction. Get used to the navigation of the system. Get used to the menus. Get used to how a transaction take um, you know goes. Yes, it may take you five times as long at first because you're using manual transactions, but that's okay. Like go at your own pace. Don't get overwhelmed with how many features and things. There's so many things in here. I don't even use them all. Like we have a million features in here. So what I like to do is just keep a little pad of paper next to my desk. And if I run across an email or something like that, um, I just write down what I would like to automate. Like if I pull up an email and it's not the way that I want it to be, and I had to type something into it, well, then I'm gonna document that. I'll either Loom video it, which is actually a really good way to do it. If you download Loom, you record what you wanted to happen. That way you can give your thoughts on it. A lot of the times when, you, when I go back to my steno pad, I'm like, what was I trying to say here? But if you have a video and you're talking over the video, it's a lot easier to, um, to remember where you were at, what you were thinking at the time, because it does get a little overwhelming when you have you know, a lot of things going on. Um, so yeah, go at your own pace. Um, reach out to help to support down the bottom right hand corner, that purple button, they'll help you through things you can't get through. Don't be spending like two hours trying to figure something out. Just ping us a quick message and we'll try to get you back on the right track within minutes, not, um, not hours. So yeah, so anyone that's new on here, you know, like I said, take your time, reach out to support, watch the videos. There's like 700 videos in there. So like type in what you want to watch and get the list of videos. There's a lot of webinars, uh, things like that, that are going to give you really good information step-by-step step to kind of get you through uh, some of the stuff you're working on. And if you're looking for more hands-on help, you can also reach out to support and say, Hey, can I get some one-on-one -on -one time? I'd like to talk with your implementation department. That would be me. That would be Jana on the call as well. Um, and we can kind of talk about what options we have, what kind of resources we can provide and one-on-one -on -one training that we can provide as well. Yep. Cool. Yeah, yep. We're here to help. We want, uh, we know it's a big endeavor and uh, usually the people that burn out on the program are people that are trying to do step 10 before they do step one. So just remember that, you know, Facebook isn't your barometer. Your barometer is your goals and, and, and what you guys want to do with your business. And we're going to help you get there. Um, you know, and it's very easy to get overwhelmed when you look at these people that have been on the program for two years. Well, they've had two years of trial and error before you. So, you know, you can glean as much information as you want from them on the Facebook group, which is great because you won't make the same mistakes that I know I made um, setting this up. I didn't set up my templates in small little groups like HOA tasks and, um, you know, septic tasks. I wish I would have done that from the beginning. I had to go back and copy or clone that template 15 times and then go back and delete out the things I didn't need, which took me a decent amount of time. Um, I wish I would have known from the beginning, just group these in small sections, but, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. Don't feel bad about it. We're here to help. Okay, I still don't have any questions. I'll give you guys another minute at 1150 Pacific. I'm going to go ahead and shut this baby down. Um, speak now or forever hold your peace. Thanks again for being here. I really appreciate all the questions. It helps us out get through this and uh, really appreciate you guys trying to expand your knowledge and we'll try to help in any way we can. So, yep, thank you. Thank you. Oh, here we go. We got one. Uh, What's the best? Okay, Erica. Well, I'm in AZ, so I can help you out with this one. Um, what is a good practice to handle the repairs request, Binzer and AZ, based on response? Yeah, so let me jump back into my other account because I can give you, I can show you how I did it. Uh, and, and I show you how I did it just to give you examples. Obviously, your workflows are different from mine. I'm not the grand poobah of open to close. So I, I find um, I find things from clients all the time that are doing it at a a better way. So, you know, this is just to kind of spark your interest um, or spark your imagination, I should say. So if I come over to my field editor, you can see that I have a lot of fields. I'm, I'm field-based because I'm on the scale plan. So I'm on the highest of upgraded plans. So I have conditional based triggers. When some, when a field changes, I can set off automation from there. You guys may not be on that plan, so you may not need as many fields. So I'm going to scroll down to my 
Binzer section and you'll see how many I have. Um, so I have a lot. <laughs> I have um, when we have the unsigned version received, when it's sent to the buyer for the buyer signature. Um, so here's one that you're going to be interested in. Binzer buyer Lexus follows. So I send it out. I get the Binzer response back from the buyer. And what do they want? They have three options. They can either ask for repairs or a credit. They can um, accept the premises as is, or they can reject the premises and elect to cancel. Okay, those are the three options we have here. So now by setting one of these um, fields in the right choice, now this is going to automate my next response. Now, if you're not on the scale plan, you can do this through smart blocks. You could have a smart block for this one, a smart block for this one, and a smart block for this one. They could all be in the same email. So depending on which option you choose, okay, the first email might be, if I select buyer ask for repairs or credit, the email may say something like, please see attached, um, my buyer is requesting, you know, blah, blah, blah. If I chose the buyer accepts premises, my email might be totally different. So have that smart block say something totally different. So the first smart block doesn't come in, but the second one does. And it says, hey, congratulations, Mr. Listing Agent. My buyer accepted the premises as is. Uh, we're ready to order the appraisal. I'll update you when I can. And then here's the sign Benzer. And then this one, sorry, Mr. Listing Agent may come in, you know, maybe say something like, sorry, Mr. Listing Agent, my buyer um, wasn't comfortable with the premises. We're going to go ahead and elect to cancel. Here's the attached Benzer canceling the contract. Um, please notify escrow or we'll notify escrow or whatever, whatever you want to say there. So now you could have three smart blocks literally stacked on top of each other in an email. And depending on which one of these you chose, it's going to send the appropriate information for you. So you don't have to retype that email or copy and paste that email in or do any of that stuff. So let's just say it, it, I did ask for repairs. And then you come down here and um, let's see. So I received it from the buyer. I sent it to the listing agent. All these dates are triggering something. So it's all triggering automation. Hey, Mr. Buyer, we sent over the Benzer to the listing agent. Hey, we received this. Hey, we did this. I'm constantly keeping my people updated throughout this transaction with no effort on my behalf. The only effort is putting in the date that we received it so that that date can get input into a merge field. Okay, um, seller response received. Um, seller response sent to buyer, seller response to buyer. Okay, so here it is. So here's the seller response. They asked for repairs. Now I have some options for the seller. Um, the seller agrees to no repairs. The seller agreed to a credit in lieu of repairs, agreed to some repairs, agreed to some repairs or a credit, agreed to some repairs and a credit. Um, so you can see all these options. You can take a look at those. Every single one of these has a separate email in my account because I'm on the scale plan, so I can do separate emails. What I would recommend for you is a separate smart block and one email for each of these. And then depending on which one you pick, it's going to trigger the condition on that smart block. So it's going to say, if I chose seller agreed to no repairs, put in this verbiage into this email. And that would be, hey, sorry, Mr. Buyer, my seller didn't agree to any repairs. Please let me know if you want to move forward or if you'd like to cancel the deal. You know, you can you, now you can say a set thing for each of these. So it looks totally custom. It looks like you spent a lot of time doing these emails. When in actuality, it's taking seconds uh, to just pull these up and hit send. So, and then we have the buyer response back to the seller. So the final response, did they um, accept no repairs? Did they accept this? Did they accept this, accept this? And, and you see the pattern here. Every choice has its own email. That's why you don't wanna, that's why I don't like the theory of, hey, let's set this system up 100% before I get started with open to close. There's so much you can do in this program. You're never going to get to 100%. It's a living document. It's, it's incremental increases in efficiency that you're doing. So let's do one thing today. Let's do two things tomorrow. Let's do three, you know, whatever you have time for. Eventually in four to six months from now, this, this thing will be humming. It will be a change of life for you and you'll be able to take vacations and not worry. You can pop in people that have very little experience because all they're doing is choosing options. It is... Um, it's next level when you get to that point, but just be patient to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, no, thank you. And uh, other than communication and emails, how do your tasks get loaded for your TC? So I don't use tasks, but if you were using tasks, what I would do is in the intake form, uh, we have, let me come down here. Um, so I have questions in my intake form. Is there an HOA? Is the house built prior to 1978? Is there a buyer contingency? Is there septic? Is there well? All of these yes or no questions are going to trigger things in the back end of my system. So if I say yes 
their, the house was built prior to 1978, that my system knows to go ahead and trigger the task template in your case, in my case, trigger um, to for all the lead based paint items. Um, you can also get come down here. I have additional terms. Was there a waived insurance claims history? Was there a waived spuds? Was there this doesn't mean anything to anyone outside of Arizona, but you know, it's just a seller disclosure insurance, things like that. So uh, was there a waived inspection period? All these things are taking things away and adding things to my transaction. So when my TC gets in there, it's really easy just to work exactly what's in there. And I don't have too much and I don't have too little. So yeah, anyone in Arizona, I mean, um, reach out to me. I have, you know, obviously that's where I'm from. So I can give you a little bit extra guidance on specific things and how I set up the system. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, and these are great. These agent questions at the beginning, these are great to streamline the um, efficiency and the automation in your system. So you can see for signing and closing. And, and you don't need all these fields, believe me, unless you're on the scale plan. I just have these because I'm triggering things to happen, triggering a text to remind, triggering an email to go out. You know, it may be list, uh, the sign went up. I put the date in there. Automatic text goes out to my agent saying, hey, the sign went up at 123 Main Street. Call your seller and get them excited about the listing. Um, things like that. Just that we're trying to increase customer service here with less time on your plate. So we want to increase um, client relations with decreasing the time spent on a transaction. And that's only going to happen through automation. I know a lot of people get scared about automation and they think they're going to sound like a robot. But as you can see, you don't sound like a robot. You actually sound like you spent a lot of time on these emails and uh, when it really didn't take you any time at all after the initial setup. So, okay, guys, hopefully that helps. We are at 11.57. No more questions in there. I, again, I appreciate you being on here. Um, it's great that you're trying to improve your knowledge. Please reach out to support if you need it and we will see you same time, same place next week. Have a great day.